Good afternoon. It's uh, Neil Betts at Go True North again, and we're back at the press in Hensford, the press bookshop and cafe. I'm having a, a fireside chat with Tim. So I'll just welcome Tim also. Also, sorry, Tim. Do you want to just uh, introduce yourself and what you do? Yeah, uh, my name's Tim Allsop. Um, I work for uh, Blue Footprints. Um, we're an outsourced um, IT provider. Um, we do we provide lots of different services, but the main bulk of it is uh, managed IT support, cyber security, and, and services around Microsoft. Oh, cool. So we're here today to talk around uh, tech savvy tips and advice for startups, you know, to try and help startup success. So we're, we'll follow over with a, a bit of a chat. And okay. I guess the, the first question I've got is about what are the key, I'm going to use a bit of IT language for a second, okay. IT infrastructure components, you know, the basic tech stuff yep. that uh, a startup should prioritize from the beginning. Um, there's a few things that people should think about, I think, in, in the beginning. And with uh, we have taken on board quite a few startups um, that we've helped to get off the ground. And we've also um, come in at the point where companies have already grown but not put the infrastructure in place. So there's a few things that always come up. Um, I suppose the initial one is the equipment. Um, people will often just go out and buy equipment. Um, if they don't have an understanding of what specification they need, that can often not be adequate. Um, and it's it's just simple things like, you know, has it got enough memory in there to, to do what they need to do on it? Um, we, we do kind of have a bog standard with equipment that we recommend yep. in terms of performance, uh, even for people that are just maybe browsing the internet and using cloud apps. Um, and, and we'd recommend that. And then one of the other points is, is to make sure they've got... Um, Win, uh, business version of Windows rather than the home version. Yep. Um, so, you know, professional, um, that's important for when they grow. So um, the other thing would be communications. Um, so uh, making, deciding what apps they're going to use for communications. If they've got Microsoft 365 or Google Workspace, they've got Google Chat or Teams. Um, again, companies will often use WhatsApp. Um, but the problem with that is it's not really traceable because um, you can get a business version of WhatsApp, but a lot of people will use the personal version. Yeah. And if they need to bring that information back or, or have a look at what staff have been communicating, um, it's very hard to do. I guess uh, it's hard for a small business because there's an app for everything out there. Absolutely. Yeah. And you can message people on so many apps now yeah. as well. Um you know, just on the personal side, there's WhatsApp and uh, Telegram and Messenger and Instagram, Instagram Signal, yeah, you name it, there's there's an app. So I think it's important to have um, a, a kind of policy, really, to say if you are talking about company um, business, then, uh, you know, that's all done through teams. And then it's all traceable. And I guess when I start up, I'm, I'm on my own and I don't think about that stuff, you know. I just yeah. get what I need now and off I go. Yeah. But in a few years' time, as I grow, yeah, you know, it's going to be difficult. Definitely. Yeah, it's it's not as in, yeah, it's not as important when it's just you or um, uh, even two of you starting up the business. But, yeah, putting these things in place will save you headaches as uh, as you grow, definitely. Yeah, so as you grow, you know, it's, it is it is difficult, you know. And, you know, what is it that you need to do to protect yourself from that um so without needing you know lots and lots of changes along the way because i don't want to keep changing from this software to that software and i've borne a bit of that in my own you know i was lucky when i set up sort of 16 odd years ago over in australia we our policy was cloud right? yeah. everything we got to be able to work anywhere and the risk to that was the internet, particularly in Australia and some of the rural areas we work. But we were, adi were, were adamant that we worked in the cloud and that me and my business partner had got access to everything. And if he falls over sick one day, I can just drop into his projects and run his projects without without missing a beat. Yeah. And that set us in good stead. And, you know, we went with Zero and other products there. Mm. And it set me in good stead today because the cloud was a just... You know, at the at its infancy, really, in businesses, a lot of the big corporates were still with all their IT infrastructure. Yep. So I guess, you know, as a business grows, you know, what is it that, that, that they need to do and think about right from day one? I think from, from day one, looking at SaaS applications, so software as a service um, applications, 
um, is key. Uh, there's Microsoft 365, which most people will have heard of, and, and most people will need a Microsoft license when they start up. There is Google Workspace as well, uh, which will do, it's, it doesn't do quite as much as Microsoft 365, but it depends on what the business is. It might be suitable for that particular business. I'm going to sound a bit old now, but this sounds a bit like the VHS versus Betamax. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Um, you, you know, without being biased, because we're a Microsoft partner, um, Microsoft are a productivity company, Google are a marketing company. Um, there's lots of things that Microsoft do better uh, in terms of productivity. For, for what you get within a Microsoft um, 365, say, business standard app uh, um, license, yep. you, you get a lot of different apps within that, um, which can save you a lot of time um, and, and, and money as well. Um, so it's, we've taken on some customers before that have grown to a certain point, and they might have Dropbox for storing their files in, and they're using Calendly for their appointments. And... Um, you know, they might have a CRM system that does other bits. But what, what we often find is um, they've got a Microsoft license and some of those additional third-party apps that they're paying for, well, there are, there's things already built into 365 that they could be using instead. Yeah. Uh, Microsoft Bookings, you know, for, for yep. you, um, does what Calendly does. And um, having that cloud storage as well. So as you were saying earlier, you know, if um, there's two of you and one person suddenly has an accident, um, all the files are stored in a, a central place so they can access them. And also the you know, the ability, as long as you've got an internet connection, you can work from anywhere at yeah. any time as well. Yeah, You don't have to be in an office. So you, you talk about the cloud now and what about, you know, if I'm a new business, what do I need to do to keep my information safe? Because that's... That's why the security is a big buzzword right now and has been for a while. Yeah, but there's something called the principle of least privilege. So only giving people access to what they need access to, um, that's important. Um, again, if you go for a cloud-based application like Microsoft 365 or Google Workspace, um, depending on how many people you've got in the business, you can set permissions um, as to what they can see and what they can't see and what they have access to. Um, Again, we you know we picked up clients where they have um, not put any of these things in place, and everyone has access to everything, which is a, a massive security risk. Yeah. Um, which you can come and put in retrospectively, but if you get these um, you, you know things put in from the start, it's going to save you a lot of hassle further down the line. Yeah, I've worked with a lot of companies in process improvement and we often map the systems across the top of it. And when you map the systems, you know, in a, in a for example, in a local council, it's not unknown of to have 90 different systems. Right. Across. <laughs> and when you start looking at what all these systems do, you know, they're using a puff team for this and they've actually got it over here in this system. And, you know, it's really important to, to make sure you build right from the start because retrospectively yeah. it's hard to change. I can give you an example. So we, we've done quite a lot of projects uh, setting up Microsoft Teams for companies where they want to store their files in there as well as use it for the chat, the yep. video, video conferencing uh, and, and other bits. Um, when a company um, puts that Teams infrastructure in place from the start, they'll have you know, a team which is a general team that everyone has access to. We, we say, even if you're small, think about it in departments. So you've got your general team, all the files in there everyone has access to, sales team, maybe even sales and marketing, finance, HR. You think, why do I need that? We're, you know, there's only one of me, there's two of us. Um, having that in place and making sure files are in the right places, as you grow, it's going to make your life so much easier. Because as soon as you get that third person in, you can then go, well, well you know, they only need access to sales and marketing because that's all I've brought them on to do. Um, and all of the files are in there that they need. Um, so from a security perspective as well, they're not accessing things that they shouldn't. That's really good advice. You know, something we did in our business, we had a director's area that only Chris and I had access to. We had yeah. a general area for the whole team, and yeah. then we had a project management team area, a lean team area, and we kept them all separate. And then we had our client areas as well, you know, and I've done exactly the same over here setting up. It, it, it's difficult because when you start up as a business, obviously you've got to take cost in, into consideration, but it will save you money in the long term because when there's 12 of you and you don't have that team's infrastructure in place and there's files everywhere and we've got to bring it all together, it's going to cost a lot more for an IT company like us to come in and, and 
build it and put it in place and do the data transfer. If it's been there from the beginning and you've been following that structure, it's going to save you money down the line, guarantee. You, 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 yeah. <laughs> so you're talking about about costs. So I'm a new business. I want to spend as little as I can, less money, yeah. but I still want something that's hyper-reliable. How's the best way to go about that? What are the sorts of things we can be doing there? So I did, I did touch on it earlier, but um, not doubling up on um, SaaS applications Again, you know, if you... So just for, for, for non-techie people, sorry, right. so software as a service. Yep. So that would be things like Microsoft 365, Google Workspace, CRM systems, services that you connect to via the internet. You'll have a login. Um, you, you're not storing any data locally. The company stores all of the data. Um, and you just have a login and a, a username and password and you log in and access it that way. So things like Dropbox, for example, you know, we see it all the time. People have got Dropbox for all their shared files and they've got 365 licenses. Yeah. Well, you've got a terabyte of storage in, in one. Um, yeah, in OneDrive personally per user, but then you've also got a terabyte of shared storage for that tenant. Yep. Um, so y you just don't need it. Um, so Trello as well is one that I see a lot. Um, there is a free version of Trello, but some people will uh, have a paid version. Um, and there's an application in 365. Microsoft Planner. Planner, yeah, yeah. Use it. Does the same thing, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so it's just making sure, and you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. Um, sometimes you go in and say, right, you, you're paying for these four bits of software, that one will do it all. But if you, you're not going to know that um, if you're not in that space. So a lot of the time it's just uh, making people aware of that. So that that's one thing. And then um, also uh, looking at leasing equipment rather than buying it. You know, if you start up and there's maybe five of you, and you need laptops, uh, maybe you want to work from home and you want um, a docking station with monitors, keyboard and mouse, so you can plug your laptop in with one cable um, and it turns it into a desktop, but then when you're out, you can take your laptop with you. Um, you know, there's going to be quite a bit of startup costs there to, to buy the equipment. If you do it on a, a lease, um, you can kind of lease that equipment over three years. Uh, at the end of the three years, either send the equipment back and get new equipment or buy it, or you could buy part of it. Um, and it's just spreading that cost then. Uh, but also, IT equipment does depreciate um, very quickly in value. Um, and tech is moving so fast. Yeah, you know, it's probably a good way to keep up with tech, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. We, um, for a long time, we're recommending a minimum of eight gig of RAM in, in laptops and desktops. And we're edging more now to say, look, you probably need 16 yeah. if you want to future proof yourself over the next three years. Yeah, that's good. Good yeah. advice. So what about emerging technologies, you know, the, all that new tech stuff that's out there? You know, what should startups be aware of and how should they leverage some of this tech to get competitive edge? Uh, yeah, I had a good think about this. And there's one big one at the moment. Um, and I, I can't really think of anything else that's disrupting the industry as much as um, AI, yep. artificial intelligence. So um, people need to be looking at ChatGPT, Gemini.